Mr. President. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, you may wish to recall that this bill was passed first reading on the 30th June 2020. It is also worthy of note that this will be the first time an attempt is made to amend the law since it became act in 2015. This bill therefore seeks to amend the administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, the sections contradicting the principle of fair hearing and court jurisdiction as provided in the Constitution. This is further to avert loggerheads between the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and the Constitution. Mr. President, the recommendations are as follows. First, Section 8.4 of the principle of act which provides I put, the arraignment and trial of a suspect for a crime shall be in accordance with provision of the act unless otherwise stated in this act will be amended by delicting unless otherwise stated in the, in the act by inciting and constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria. The reason is that the constitution, the supreme law provides in section one, one, as follows. This constitution is supreme and its provision shall have binding force on all authorities and persons throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In view of the above provision of the constitution, all authorities in Nigeria should confirm to the constitutional provision. Therefore, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act shall also confirm with the supreme provision of the Constitution 1999 as amended. Further, the court has held that in 1999 Constitution as amended fundamental law on which every law in Nigeria rests. The Supreme Court paid Fabi JAC on the Supreme Court of the Constitution on the Supremacy of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria said, I put the Constitution of Nigeria is grown non, non wise as a basic norm from which all other laws in the society drive its validity. Each legal norm of the society drives its validity from the basic norm, and any other law that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution must give way or abate. The court has all that. The Constitution of a nation is a further not only the jurisprudence, but also the legal system. In Greek, it is alpha and omega. It is the parameter which all statutes are measured. Section 253 of the Constitution provides that the Federal High Court shall duly constitute if constituted of at least one judge of that court. Furthermore, Section 273 provide for the purpose of existence of any jurisdiction conferred upon it under this constitution or any law. A federal high court of a state shall be duly considered if it consists at least one judge of the court. More so, the Court of Appeal has held that the provision of 273 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 has amended a simple judge sitting in the court is qualified and had the power to try criminal offenses. Reading the provisions of 253 and section 273 together with the section 237 of the Constitution 1999 as amended, we clearly spell out the composition of the judges of the court and the justices of court of appeal and the powers to hear and determine matters before equally provided for by the same constitution. The constitution should be read together on the provisions to establish composition and jurisdiction of the courts. The various court, high courts and court of appeals rules have provisions with regard to the position of pending cases. When judges are elevated, more often the position is a matter to start de novo. However, to allow a judge 
who is elevated to the court of appeal to determine cases before him, while a high court judge will raise the issue of jurisdiction. Although the Constitution says in Section 2522 that the National Assembly will, and by law, make, pro make provisions conferring upon the Federal High Court additional powers to this conferred by the Constitution. Yet, there exists a, lac a, a lacuna in the respect of the provision of elevated judge from High Court to Court of Appeal. That is the gap that needs to be filled. It will be advisable that the Constitution will be amended expressly to handle the gap created when judges are elevated to next bench to be given right or powers to conclude power hard cases on elevation before moving to the next level. In view of the affirmation, we submit with this issue raised that constitutional amendment is the best option to take care of such lacuna. Further, general observation, our judiciary systems recognizes and apply the rule of steered the crisis, meaning rules of precedent and hierarchy of courts. More so, more so courts are classified accordingly, accordingly the Constitution and other extant laws. We should clearly demarcate or clearly spell out jurisdiction of court to avoid contradiction and uncertainty. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, we can see set lofty goals to ourselves. I hope we can agree that with this amendment, we aspire to create a criminal, criminal justice administration legislation that is both for effective and more humane. By effective, I mean that we should respond to crime in ways that produce social desirable results. Greater safety, less fear, less suffering, greater respect for rule of law, and less injustice. And that we should also effectively invest investing our precious financial and human resources in ways that minimize the results we desire. By more human, I mean we should respect, respect, respond to crime in ways that recognize the humanity of those victimized by crime, those arrested, those convicted of crime, and those who experience the rapid effect of crime of our justice system. This affirmation of humanity, as I see it, incorporates value we both dear to our democracy. Such equal protection of laws, access to rights, guaranteed by our Constitution and our fundamental belief in the dignity. Mr. President, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Having proposed for this, I will ask my colleagues to carefully look into this matter because I was a victim of this section of the Constitution. Thank you very much. Representing Benway North East Senatorial District. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the amendment of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is something that must be done holistically. Why I totally support the mover of this motion, I want this be, I want to add that what we need to do. Because talking to a lot of lawyers and judges, it has become imperative for this House to amend the entire Administration of Criminal Justice Act. It is not just about some section as mentioned here uh, by the proposal of this bill. We need to amend the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. It was passed in a hurry, and there are a lot of mistakes that are involved. People have been unjustly, unjustly convicted because of the mistakes that have been found in this, but because they have not been challenged up to the Supreme Court, we now have, we now have a singular uh, <clears throat> opportunity now, Mr. President, for us as proposed here, he has proposed a few sections of it, but there are a lot of sections. Uh, Mr. President, it might interest you to know that just uh, about two weeks ago, when all the judges were here uh, for a conference, I had cause to interact with a few of them who came to see me. Um, most of their complaint was on the administration of uh, Criminal Justice Act. It will also interest you to know that in most states, Mr. President,
president, most states have refused to domesticate Aja in their state. That means that it does not work well or it does not work in consonance with the uh, aspirations of those, those states. And so it is important and imperative for us, given this opportunity for us to amend the administration of criminal justice, and not just sections are selected here by the mover of this, uh, of this bill. Mr. President, I so submit. Well, those of you who are this will be now read the second. A bill for an act to amend the administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 and for other related matters 2021, second reading taken, and the bill is referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to report by within four.